All right. Today we're going to talk about automatic updates, um, which is a much awaited feature in Drupal. Um, soon to be going to be in core. Um, and then, yes, we'll discuss it um, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Nidai Smile Shah. This is uh, after a long time I'm on a stage again in a Drupal event uh, after five years. The last one was DrupalCon Baltimore. Um, so yeah, I'm from Kashmir and I work with NetNode, uh, which is an agency based in um, Switzerland, Lucerne, Switzerland. So feel free to check us out. Um, yes, automatic updates. Why automatic updates? Because Let's be honest, uh, most of our sites aren't up to date. We are running insecure Drupal sites, um, particularly because maintenance is hard, Composer is hard. Um, a lot of the times we as developers find ourselves um, juggling through Composer issues and uh, most of the times banging our heads why a certain version cannot be um, installed. Um, so this basically takes um, a lot of that complexity away from um, your uh, normal workflows and just allows you to quickly um, install the latest um, security release or a patch release for, for that matter as well. Um, so yeah, we, we, the goal is basically to ensure um, easy updates for most of the Drupal sites. As I was mentioning earlier, uh, this is going to be, this is already a most awaited feature in core, but it's still not in core. Um, most of the people are not aware that there has been a stable release already uh, for quite some time of this module, uh, which works with both Drupal 9 and Drupal 10. Uh, but then there's also uh, recently it was released an alpha for um, branch 3x version also. Um, so you can, you can use either of these two versions. So if you have some requirements based on your workflows to have stable releases only, you can use the one, uh, you can use the second version. Otherwise, feel free to test out the third version and, and share your feedback also. Um, so we'll, we'll quickly go into structure. Uh, what is automatic updates? What's involved? Um, so basically, it's a collection of a bunch of modules. Um, the main automatic updates module, uh, and then it has uh, sub-modules, package manager module, and then also automatic updates extension module. Uh, and then the, it also utilizes behind the scenes a Composer lib uh, a PHP library called as Composer Stager, uh, which really handles like allows you to create copies of your code base so that updates can be run on a different copy and not on your um, live uh, site basically. Automatic updates, the main module. What does it do? Um, it allows you to update core um, and only core. Um, it replaces the core's update UI and also allows you to run updates in the background. Um, right now, by default, um, the configuration for this um, has been disabled uh, for some reasons we'll get into later. Um, but yeah, it does allow you to run updates in background also, and then you can also uh, do it through the UI um, as well. It's been built on top of package mon manager module, uh, which I discussed earlier, which is a sub-module of, uh, of the automatic updates module. The same module is being used by project browser initiative as well. And then eventually, once this gets merged into the core, uh, the package manager module will be a separate module uh, and an individual module in core that the both um, initiatives can use. Package manager module, as I mentioned right now, it's a sub-module of automatic updates module, um, and it is an API only module. It does not have a UI. It allows you to really um, perform staged composer updates uh, that I was referring to earlier. Um, so it enables you to create a staged copy of your um, code base and then runs the composer updates uh, on the staged copy. And then basically it allows you to manage two different uh, versions or copies of your of the same site so that uh, updates can be run on a different, different copy. Um, it is not uh, Drupal specific. Uh, I mean the, the library, package manager library that it utilizes, it's not Drupal specific. It can update any composer uh, package, any PHP package that's managed with composer. And obviously, um, the automatic updates, mod, updates module um, basically uses, uses this module and the Composer Stager library to perform more, most of the tasks. 
And again, it's used by the project browser initiative as well. It also does a lot of other things, like most of the requirement checks um, to ensure that your Drupal site is ready uh, for to run automatic updates is done by this module. It also um, provides, uh, gives means to customize the update process, meaning it gives you a lot of um, events um, that you can then subscribe to to customize your process if should you need to do that. Um, and I, as I mentioned, it um, also uh, will be a separate module. One of the interesting things that it does is it also prevents like some conflicting operations, uh, meaning once an update is going on uh, in a separate process, if you just log into the server and then start installing a module, it basically prevents you from doing that so that you don't uh, land in a, a completely messed up state. And then we also have uh, automatic uh, update extensions module. Um, so I, uh, regarding the original module, I mentioned it only updates core, uh, but this module, um, right now an experimental module and also a sub-module, um, allows you to update contrib modules and, and themes. So how does it work? Um, basically, the automatic updates module. Um, there is a whole series of steps that happens uh, from uh, the beginning of the update to the end. Um, which is divided into four phases, collectively called as um, the life cycle of an update. It starts with basically the create phase, where you just go in and um, you create a version uh, or a copy of your code base, um, and it's stored in, in the temporary directory um, of your server. Um, and it is this copy where, firstly, the updates are run. And what goes into this copy is also customizable, but by default, only composer-managed files go into this copy. So meaning your anything managed by uh, composer, your core, um, contrib themes, uh, modules, um, excluding your uh, file uploads, anything that the user uploads that does not have anything to do with um, composer. It does not copy your database, so it's just a bare bones um, copy of only, uh, only your code base. So once we have this copy ready, then comes the require phase. We just, um, the module just runs composer commands on this stage copy so that the stage copy can be updated and uh, it can be tested whether the update um, applies successfully on this um, stage copy or not. Given that most of the composer commands are compo like you run the more, uh, uh, are mostly require commands, so that uh, like composer require certain version, so that's why this is called also uh, the require phase. And then comes the most interesting phase, and this is where uh, most of the issues could happen, um, is the apply phase. This is where your the stage copy, where you have just run the composer update and you have installed updates on the stage copy, is then copied onto your um, original site. Um, so your original site with, uh, will now be with new code, and then this is where most issues can happen. And then if everything works okay, then we go to the destroy phase, where the stage copy is then just destroyed because we don't need it anymore. So how do we do it in, in like from a practical user perspective? Um, it's easy. Just a couple of clicks um, and you're done with an update. You get basically, as I was mentioning, uh, the module replaces the uh, core's update UI. So once you're on the modules page, there's an update tab. Uh, once you go into it, it will basically list out whether you're uh, behind on a security release or a patch release, or even if you're behind on, on a minor release for that matter. Um, so yeah, and then you just click the update button and then you have more, a couple of clicks, and then the update is done. There are really two types of updates, attended updates and unattended updates. Attended updates are when you have to uh, you know, go to this forum and you have to do everything yourself. You have to click a few buttons and then and the update is done. That is what's attended updates. Unattended, up, uh, unattended updates would be when you sort of, um, the updates that happen when, when you're asleep, you, that run in the background, um, uh, updates the site automatically on their own. So we'll go through how to do attended and unattended updates. So I showed this earlier. Um, you go to this tab, and then once you click the update button, um, it will just download the updates. That means the create phase and the require phase. 
Um, once that is done and then the update is ready to be applied, it also checks if there are any database updates involved in the update in the latest version that you're now going into. So once, you, once it detects database updates, it lets you know that there are database updates and it really recommends you to put your site into maintenance mode so that database updates can be run, um, which is obviously the right thing to do. So once you do that, it then applies the updates if everything works okay and then we go to the update.php where you can run these updates and then the update is done. So as I said, just a couple of clicks and the update is done. Unattended updates is interesting because um, these updates run in the background and a lot of issues can happen uh, which you are not aware. Uh, attended updates are, are very permissible, like uh, uh, very, uh, we do not have as many restrictions there because you are there doing it and if something does not work, you can just sort of react to it and uh, restore from a backup. So by taking backups is also very important. But with unattended updates, they run in the background. Because they run in the background, there are some restrictions also. So right now you can only um, configure the module to uh, update you to latest security release or the latest patch release. What I mean by security release is that if there's a new release, 10 dot something, um, and you're behind and it's a um, security release, it has a security fix. Um, if you've configured the module to update only to the latest security release, it will update you. Otherwise, if it's just a normal patch release and it, it does not involve any security fix, it will not update you if you have configured the module um, to do so. Um, if something happens uh, during this process, um, the unattended process, it will send you an email that your site uh, update was not successful and then you need to react to it. Probably um, restore from a backup your code base and also your database, uh, which is obviously the right thing to do then. It can be run in two ways, using uh, like through a web request um, or also using a drush command. I must note here that Drush command has only been, is only available in the 3x version of the module. In the 2x version, you just have to um, do it using the web request. The web request can be uh, the request you use to trigger cron, so something like a slash system cron, or just a request to your cron.php. Obviously, since this is um, disruptive in nature, it has been disabled by default. Um, why? I will go into that in a minute, um, but it can be, um, it's uh, basically set in config, so you can run a drush command or programmatically change that config in your, in your site. Um, as I was mentioning, there are two ways to run uh, unattended updates, using drush and also using a web request. Um, using drush is a little uh, better because now here you, uh, obviously when you're running an update, um, files need to be changed on your um, site. Um, so uh, the user has to have access to modify files or write to your file system. When you're running it with Drush, that means you're running it through terminal. Um, it's not the web server user, um, so which is very, a bit more secure than giving your um, you know, web server access to modify files. Um, since this is going to be run on the terminal, this is prone to like less timeout issues. Um, and obviously we can run it using a more privileged user which has access to modify uh, files then. Um, you need to set it up, basically. Uh, you need to configure cron tab to run this um, drush command, drush auto update. Um, that will then, uh, whichever frequency you choose, um, it will automatically run and update your site. Uh, more work uh, has, is going on uh, because once this gets merged into core, um, since core does not use Drush, does not provide Drush commands, and does not have a dependency on Drush. So work is being done to provide a Symfony console command uh, to basically trigger this update. Then you can write a Symfony console command and that will trigger the update instead of a, a Drush command. Unattended updates via web. So this is where you just directly um, configure your cron tab to ping system cron or uh, just cron.php. Um, since this will be using the web server, this will be a web request and will be using the web server user. Um, this will be more prone to timeouts because it's a web request. Um, and then you also need to give access to your web server user to be able to modify files um, on your site. 
But again, in, in this case also, work is being done to make some improvements. Um, so this, uh, the way when you trigger it via the web request, um, internally work is being done to also use the same symphony console command discussed in the, in the previous issue. So then that will eliminate the requirement to give your web server access to write uh, files. Um, when I mentioned the um, unattended updates are right now disabled by default, and that is because of a, a security concern and also something that the module and the Drupal Association team is working on, is to implement the update framework. Um, this is a protocol of uh, how we update softwares by Cloud Native. Um, and currently, I think Drupal Dot Association is working on this, so that when you then um, automatically behind the scenes um, try to fetch new versions of Drupal from Drupal or even the contrib modules from Drupal.org, they're automatically signed, and you can be uh, assured that it's automatically safe, safe, and there's no like a man in the middle or something, a supply side attack going on. So that is why right now the unattended updates are disabled by default. Once this implementation is complete, uh, then you will be able to set that config in, in, in the UI using a form or something. Okay. And then in order to be able to run these updates, um, there are certain requirements um, that define if your site is ready. Uh, to be uh, to run automatic updates, the requirements are obviously using the terminal or the web server. Your file system should be writable, as discussed. Um, composer commands need to be run, so composer should be runnable. Um, there are a lot of composer plugins available out there. Not all of them are supported, um, so you need to be using the supported um, composer plugins only. And then multi-site is not support uh, supported right now because. Um, database updates need to be run, uh, and you need to stop the site from like installing new modules. It will be tricky to, to you know, define which site to stop, and then if uh, you're using the same code base, if another site tries to install modules, so that, that will be catastrophic. Composer needs to be using HTTPS. It's basically a config that you can set in your composer.json, which is by default set to true. Um, but then there are like a lot of other things that need to be there in order for your site to be able to run automatic updates. And luckily, there are um, lots of validation checks that have been done by the package manager module itself. And then um, if there are any requirements that your site does not meet, it will give you a, a message or a warning on status page. Or if you've configured unattended uh, updates, that means um, it is more tricky, then it will basically give you a message on every admin page that your site is not compatible or needs to, be, needs to do something um, in order for automatic updates to run. So it will give you a message on all the admin pages then. And then the, red, uh, the, the report looks, like, looks something like this. This is still on the update page. As you can see, it gives you a number of issues that, you, that you know, your site can have. Um, your site does not, uh, has not run database, latest database updates. You're using uh, unsupported composer word, uh, plugins. Xdebug is in, uh, disabled or enabled, uh, which may hinder the performance. Um, so a lot of uh, things like this, I think, it depends from uh, one site to another. So once you actually go on and install your modules, install the module, enable it, and come to this page, you will see uh, what sort of issues there can be with your site. Um, and then you can accordingly fix them. All right. And then we move on to, uh, this was all about like updating core. Um, you can also update um, your contrib modules, uh, which is automatic uh, by the sub-module, which is still experimental. Um, you, it gives you a list of modules that you have installed, which are lagging behind. And then you can really choose uh, which ones you want to update. One of the interesting things that you can see here is that your when you go on this form, uh, when you go on this tab, update extensions, and also on the, uh, when you try to update core as well, um, if you have some issues or if you're missing some requirements, um, it will not give you the, it will hi just hide the update button so you're not able to get an update um, then. All right, this module is experimental, as I mentioned. Uh, we can update core modules and themes. It is not a part of core MVP, so when this is merged into core, 
this will not be included. It will still continue to be a contrib module. Um, behind the scenes, it can use the same package manager and uh, module, and then the update UI can be same, but then it will still continue to be a contrib module. Particularly because of the backwards compatibility reasons, um, there's a strict um, protocol and uh, rules for core that uh, core has to maintain uh, backwards compatibility across it, the minor releases and across the patch releases. Um, but in, we don't have that kind of rules in the contrib space, and a contrib module can break big backwards compatibility. So that's why we just, uh, it will just continue to be in the experimental space for now. What are the limitations uh, of automatic updates module? It doesn't right now do major core updates because again of the backwards compatibility reasons and then these updates are very disruptive. Um, so this is not in scope for the module for now. Um, it does not allow you to do rollbacks, um, particularly not uh, um, automatic, updates, automatic updates problem. It's really a core problem because um, core also does not give you a way to roll back an update. So if, uh, particularly also if you have run database updates on, on a site, there's no way for you to um, undo that uh, apart from just restoring from a backup. So that is why uh, taking a backup before an update is very um, critical. It does not uh, allow you to test your update before you can deploy it because it does not copy um, your whole site. It does not create a, a new site after, out of your site. It just copies the code base, um, just the composer managed files. So there's no way for us to um, uh, you know, uh, boot, create a bootable um, environment there that you can go in and test. Um, but it does allow you to um, customize the process. So this can be set up with, with some kind of custom code. But I think at that point, you have to ask yourself whether it is really uh, worth it or not. Um, I think for uh, users like that, there's other mechanisms already in place where you can just simply test an update before, uh, before you deploy any change. It's not version control aware. That means if you simply go on in your production site, uh, which is managed by Git or whatever kind of uh, version control workflow, um, it will modify files, and then your site will um, be in a um, not a clean um, setup. That means your site will have some modified files. It will not commit those changes for you. Um, you have to yourself uh, basically hook into the or customize the update process and ensure that after the update is completed the, that you um, commit your changes to your version control. Um, who is this for? Um, users that um, prefer to avoid the com command line, users that do not have uh, really the time or the resources to do an update in their usual workflow. It just, it just allows them to get, get on the latest version quickly with the click of a button or automatically. Um, it's, it's for users like, like those who is this not for, uh, where you have like very complex workflows um, and every change has to go through a particular deployment workflow, to go through a rigorous re review. Um, this is where this is a bit less helpful. But I think for, for users or enterprise sites like these, I think there are already mechanisms in place to, to ensure that all updates are deployed um, in the right way. It also allows you to customize the process, uh, meaning a lot of events are dispatched. Um, you can hook into these events and you can really customize the process. Um, you can perform any set of tasks before an update or also an after an update. Um, and then you can, based on certain conditions, you can also prevent your site from being updated um, if there's any um, issues or if you want to sort of, look, sort of like check for certain conditions. One of the events, I think there are a bunch of events. Uh, we'll start with the collect uh, paths to exclude event. So this is event that the, core, that the module itself uses um, to um, prevent any files from getting into your, uh, getting copied into the staged uh, copy that gets created when, when in the create phase, basically. Um, so we do not need all of the files there. Um, so the user uploaded files. Um, a, a good example to, to understand this event is that the module itself implements this event to exclude any git folders, dot git folders from, from the code base, and also the node modules folder uh, from the code base uh, from getting into the staged copy because it's not needed there for the update. So you can really, if you want, to prevent certain files from being copied 
uh, for whatever reason, you can use this event. And then you have pre and post events for all the um, stages uh, of the update. So pre event for create, and then you also have a post create. You have pre require, post require, and then uh, for, for the apply phase and destroy phase as well. You can really hook into these events um, to prevent like uh, prevent the update based on certain conditions or whatever customization you want to do. Um, so we have events for that. Yep. Um, and then there's also a failure control mechanism um, that is built in. Uh, whenever, uh, by default, I think whenever it, dis uh, whenever, it um, uh, whenever it detects any issue with your um, site, it prevents the update from happening. Um, that is true until the apply phase. After the apply phase, if there are any issues, um, it will just sort of, the update is run by now. It will then email you that your site is not in a good condition and then you need to react to it. Um, up until that point, if there are any issues, missing requirements or things like that, it will just uh, sort of uh, stop the update and then your, um, uh, obviously those updates will be in the stage copy. It's not on, on your main site, so you won't be as affected by that. And eventually, I think, yeah, again, uh, you must uh, take a backup before so you can restore after, you know, if there are any issues. In core, when do we expect this in core? As I mentioned earlier, there are a few things that are still pending. Uh, once the update framework protocol has been implemented on the Drupal.org side, and then it will go into a security team review because we're modifying files. Um, once that is done, then it will go into the core committer review, and after that, it will be, I think, merged into the core. Um, how you can contribute and how you can test. Uh, this one was the first, when first alpha release was um, released on the third version of the module. I think this one was created by the um, tech initiative lead, um, Ted Bowman. Um, there's also a Git pod link that you can trigger um, to create a site um, 10.0.0 on Git pod. And then you can really, the module will be automatically installed and you can test it out. Um, you can also test it in your projects and then um, share feedback on, on the drupal.org um, issue queue. Um, the link to this issue is also included here. And then really thank you to um, Ted Bowman particularly for also helping on some, some of my questions for this presentation. He's the uh, tech initiative lead uh, for this initiative and then other initiative uh, member, members from the initiative team and also um, for all other you know, contributors as well. So thank you for this initiative. And then also thank you to my employer and also we are um, hiring, go check us out. Um, you should see if you want to talk to us, you should see one of our team members in the Go Digital Branding t-shirts. So just contact us. Um, any questions? I think we have the microphone here. Sorry. I think there's one there. Thank you, first of all, for the presentation. Mm -hmm. And I have obvious question. Why not just create some setting that you can use another database for running stage updates? Just copy beforehand with, maybe not this module will do this, but you can do the cron job to dump database to some other database, and then run the update on the other database and see if it's okay or not, and then only apply on the real one. I think sites are really different. So the seeing part is really up to the um, site owners 
And as I mentioned, there are a lot of hooks and sorry, not hooks, the events that you can hook into. So if you want to like um, customize that process and build that out for you, that's definitely possible. It's just not included in, in core. Um, so you can really, if you want to build something like that, um, you have the means to do that. You just need to write custom code for it. And one more question uh, regarding the patches. So if you have a, for the core, like I don't know, two, three patches, and one will not be applied after the, you're trying to apply the new version. So for example, it's already in, or the patch needs a reroll, like how then the automatic updates can go? I think uh, if there's any issues with applying patches, it detects them beforehand, and then um, it just basically tells you that this update cannot be applied and you need to react to it. And this is also true when you have like installed some, um, I was just testing this the other day. If you have, if you're any, on any unsupported release, it does not allow you to use the module. You, you cannot update from that. It really expects you to be in a, uh, you know, um, supported release or in a supported environment. Then you can use the module to uh, upgrade from there onwards. And one more question, sorry. Uh, about the Drupal scaffold, why is it not uh, unsupported? Because that one is like a recommended way to install. So Drupal recommended uses scaffold plugin. So why it's unsupported in the module? Sorry, I did not get that. The Composer Drupal scaffold plugin mm -hmm. was listed in one screenshot as unsupported. And then the, up, the module will not work. But this plugin is part of the Drupal recommended Composer project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was, uh, it was, I was testing on a pretty old site. Um, if there are any versions where, like, any Composer plugins that you think should be included um, and are not supported here, I recommend you to uh, create an issue with the update in the module issue queue, and then the team will be basically um, answering you. I'm not very, uh, I'm not the main contributor, so I cannot uh, answer that possibly. Uh, I have a question. Do you recommend to use this module on production or mostly on staging? Um, it really depends on your um, what sort of site you're running and your site requirements. Um, if your web server enables you to uh, you know, write file systems, then you can, definitely. Um, as far as recommendations go, I think definitely you can try it out for initially for the testing purposes. Once everything has been tested and once everything is in, once the module is in core, then definitely it should be the recommended way to update. Okay, there's one. Yeah. Hi. Could you give us some ideas on how could we synchronize the code base with the versioning system after the updates are applied on the server? Like using a CI CD tool or some manual steps to follow? Yeah, I think there are like um, the hooks that I mentioned um, get execute, get triggered. Uh, the events that I mentioned get triggered before a stage and after a stage. So you can just hook into, let's say, post apply. Once you see everything has been applied and everything went okay, then you can sort of build some sort of an integration that just runs the, um, uh, you know, git commands on on the server, um, and then just you just have to really figure out how to run the git commands after that, and then sort of like push it to wherever you want to push it. So you can really, you know, customize your workflow um, using these events. Okay, so basically installing Git on the server and using the commands right there. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions? There's one more. In the corner. Here. Hi. Um, does the update uses Composer to, to download new uh, versions, mm -hmm. check updates. Does it also um, update the Composer JSON? Uh, yes. Or, uh, uh, yeah. yeah that's those, those are the files that need to be, you know, writable, obviously. Um, that's why we have the write access requirement. So it just, it will update files on, on the file system. 
Okay, so it's just like a normal update, but just happens automatically. Okay, so so all you need, if you run this process in a container, you can just look if there's a change in okay. composer lock and yep. use that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, you you mentioned the uh, uh, unattended automatic updates for uh, contrib. Uh, we'll need to use the update framework. Um, for now, I think uh, unattended updates are not supported for uh, contrib, just for core. Um, and then you're there you have the config where you can define if you want the, all the patch releases or only the security releases. Uh, what's trickier with um, contrib space is that you can right now only uh, do it through the UI. Only the attended way is supported. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? For the talk first, and uh, I'd like to hook up onto the question asked first here by uh, the uh, colleague here. Um, you mentioned that it is possible to hook into a pre applied uh, hook to dump and rebuild a database onto a second stage database, but there remains the problem of uh, tweaking Drupal to run the updates on this tweaked, uh, on this dumped database. How do you do that? So you have to make sure that the update that will run on the stage, uh, stage of the update process will be applied to the copied database and not onto the live database. Mm -hmm. So I'm not uh, sure how you can apply that or how you can accomplish that. I think what, what the module does is it basically only allows you to create the staged copy and then it additionally gives you events to customize into that process. I think then it's the responsibility of the custom code developer um, to just basically um, you know, create a bootable um, site out of that staged copy. It will just only give you um, composer managed files, so you won't have any user uploads, you won't have any other files. It's your responsibility to ensure everything goes in that copy um, be it the database, be it the user uploaded files, and then create a bootable uh, you know, site out of it that you can also access over the internet and you can test. So it's really up to the, um, like the custom code uh, developer. Yep. Okay. If there are no other questions, um, I thank you for your participation. All right.